Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome. Today I'm joined by Elder Olifson, who's CEO at Amarok Minerals. Hi today, Elder. I'm fine, thanks, Zach. Thanks for having me. Right, uh, Amarok, uh, maybe it is a company that not that many are familiar with. Maybe you could just run through what you do and where you operate. Yeah, we are a, uh, a mining a mineral company in Greenland. Primarily focused on South Greenland, and we hold one of the largest land packages in Greenland to date. We are one of the oldest operators in Greenland, meaning we've been investing and operating in Greenland for the past eight years. And I believe we are the largest private investor also in Greenland uh, with regards to mineral exploration and then development of our gold mine in Nalman. And so for people who are not familiar with obviously your company, one thing, but also Greenland, what is the what, what is the sort of the prospect and the potential of Greenland as a, a mining jurisdiction? Yeah, so how I look at it is, is threefold. We obviously have the whole debate about what is the bottleneck of going green in the world. And then you obviously have political attention attention in relation to jurisdiction, where we're going to get our minerals, et cetera, et cetera. And in the old days, Greenland was often said to be the middle of nowhere. Whereas actually, I find Greenland is the middle of everywhere, meaning that Greenland sits next to Iceland. It is effectively a massive landmass between North America and Europe. And it's a landmass that hasn't been explored or developed to any extent in terms of mineral uh, exploration and or, well, to some extent exploration, but mainly exploitation. So most of these resources that we have there and certainly within our portfolio, they are already discoveries, meaning you discover something on surface due to the fact that the glacier has just basically retreated and there's not much that visually hinders you to see the minerals, right? Well, the second thing is Greenland is effectively a home-ruled government under the government of Greenlanders, I should say, but it's under a Danish jurisdiction. So you are working under the same standards as we have here in Scandinavia, which means that the legislation is sound, the whole understanding of how to operate, et cetera, et cetera, is important. What has been a uh, more of a uh, challenge or, or work that needs to be done is, is, is how do you operate in a place like that? How do you operate in a place that only has about 50,000 people? And that takes a bit of time to get there, but it also means you need a huge amount of investment. And that is what has been changing in Greenland for the past 10 years. Both the government, the Danish government, the US government, they've been investing in a massive amount of infrastructure, things like airports, uh, harbors, power systems, like hydroelectric power system, et cetera, et cetera, making Greenland much more accessible and much more easier to operate within. So the opportunity now is that this big, big frontier, which is of the size of Western Australia, is now opening up for, at a minimum, to secure mineral for the kind of a Western Hemisphere. And so, I mean, just to sum up what you're saying, I presume that given that it's like virgin territory in terms of mining, that a lot of the low-hanging fruit is still there, which is not there in more, um, well, more mature mining situations or historic places in the world like you know europe or even in america yes so i would argue that and effectively i was on a meeting the other day and, and effectively there are not many frontiers left you obviously have places like greenland and then you have some of the arctic but then you you effectively have maybe afghanistan and colombia but obviously due to certain security problems you don't have as much investment there as, as elsewhere so this this is a really good place to operate within. And I think as well, like in relation to uh, the whole supply of minerals is that it's also extremely well accessible due to the fact that the whole coastline has fjord system, which makes it easy to bring product online. And uh, in the day and age, uh, kind of a way how we secure our, our whole pipeline of minerals, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you mentioned uh, Denmark. Uh, the other added uh, bonus is that you're effectively in a new tier one jurisdiction. Correct, correct. 
So the legislation has been set up correctly. They only put it up in 2009 and they made some amendment in 2012 and then again only a couple of years ago. But it follows all of the standards in relation to you know how you pay taxes, royalties, the salary level there is is similar to what you have in Scandinavia, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it's a, it's a stable and good jurisdiction to operate within. But what I would argue as well is that when I started operating in Greenland, or, or I say I put, put the team here, we I had I had criticism when people said, how are you going to operate? There are few people who live there. How are you going to build up your mind, et cetera, et cetera. Um, whereas in my mind, this is one of the great opportunity of Greenland, meaning that in places like in Europe or in US, due to the density of population within these countries, it's very hard to build something. We've seen this in Europe, we've seen this in, in US. So to get permits for mines, to get all of these different things to be done, due to the fact that there is always a town or something very, very close to it. You see it even here in the UK. Whereas in Greenland, we are in a very pristine and beautiful environment and we we make sure we operate there at the highest standard but then at the same time there is no one there there is very few people living around us and on top of that in terms of uh, nature and so on it's not like you're in the middle of a forest breaking down tree there is, there is basically bare rock and, and very little biodiversity at this stage so how we see things as the company is that we don't effectively only come in to mine. We obviously have to build up the whole infrastructure of a project, meaning camps, uh, which we already have, 50-person camp. We have to build up energy infrastructure. And then we have to build up relationship with the people there in Greenland, which we have been doing. And part of that is to build together with them the energy infrastructure, the green energy infrastructure we need for our mine, but also for the local communities. So we often say we mine for the short term, but for the longer term, we're actually leaving something behind and taking advantage of the fact that we have infrastructure that we're setting up, which is non-existent today, which makes it quite expensive for the local population to build up a greener future. We can do two things there for the short term and for the long term. When I speak about long term, I'm talking about obviously tens or even hundreds of years, right? That sort of brings us uh, neatly to where is Amarok now in terms of what it's looking at, what its activities are, etc. Yeah, so we're entering our busiest season ever in the past eight. In the, we've been operating 20, since 2014 in Greenland. We have funding of a total of approximately $100 million in place. And this $100 million is directed to a exploration of five to seven assets, drilling of five to seven assets. These are copper, nickel, rare earth, and then three gold assets, right? We are then developing our Nalana gold mine to start mining in the coming years. So we are drilling that asset and then we are developing effectively a mine, which is, this is a past producing mine. And how we see it is that we get Nalana operates as our operating base and the cash flow producing asset to fund the exploration of these potential world-class deposits that are sitting all around us. So we're well funded. We are have a cash flow on the horizon. And then we have this fantastic potential of world-class minerals that we are actually drilling this summer on this year and as well for the next two years, which makes it, in our mind, a very exciting opportunity and I think we are the busiest or if not the most busiest company that ever worked in Greenland so far in terms of meters drilled, in terms of investment, in terms of uh, a portfolio of assets that we have within our remit. Okay, so currently you've got a market cap of over 100 million. So obviously the market is aware of the potential of your company. Uh, how much do you think that reflects, the current market cap reflects what you could achieve? Well, you're right. I mean, we're always going between currencies, but we have a market of 100 million. We have a liquidity of approximately the same or cash of, or access to cash of approximately the same, which means that we think we have a huge potential to increase value here. Um, the work in Nalunak, which is to bring that into cash flow, will immediately give us a move from being a developer to effectively a, a producer. 
And then we are then drilling every single year all of these assets uh, around Nalunaka, and then we use Nalunaka as an operating base. So as soon as we are funded to cash flow, then all of a sudden you can start putting your focus on all of these satellite deposits around us. And the value of those assets in our mind should be much, much greater. And we are obviously also unlocking that value by drilling that, we feel, right? So you think that even though obviously it's a decent market cap now compared to many, maybe your competitors in uh, more long-standing uh, jurisdictions, the inflection point for the business will come in the run-up to production, but also with further drilling and uh, proving out your assets. Yes, we're just entering a whole summer of drilling here. So that means more assets. We're building up our resource base. There's a massive growth in the resource grade, we feel, right? But then secondly, we're really well capitalized and we have access not only to the London market, but we also have an access to the Icelandic market that we just got listed on. And we have been contemplating going from effectively what you would say a, a, a market in Iceland up to a main board listing in Iceland, which should give us hopefully much more liquidity within the company and allow institutional investors to further participate in the company. So there are several inflection points here for the company going forward, not only uh, within the company, what we do with the capital we have so far, but also in terms of liquidity and uh, accessibility to capital that we have at the moment. You know, obviously going to be busy going into the summer, seasonally anyway. What's the aspect of the of your uh, projects that you think investors should be following most keenly? Yeah, so I think I think the baseline for all of this is the Nalunak gold mine, and we have a resource there of three hundred twenty thousand ounces at twenty eight gram per ton, making this mine one of the highest grade gold mines in the world today. So we are already drilling in Nalunak to increase the resources. We have a model there, which we call Dolorite Dyke model, that predicts really well how to drill and how to increase resources, which we are just working on the back of as we speak right now. So I would, I would follow that immediately. Then we are going to go into the strategic mineral portfolio that we have now fully funded with a group called JCAM, led by JCAM and, and more capital, where we have in total 18 million sterling to drill and develop that portfolio of nickel, copper and rare earth. So we're starting that in June, July. And then going further into the season, June, July, August, we will go and, and we'll be developing and starting to set up the mine, getting the mine contractor with the Thyssen group on site, preparing to set up the processing plant in the fall and, and early winter. And then we will start developing mining the follow in early 2024. So you can see there is a lot on the horizon, both in the resource growth and getting us towards cash flow, which will then support even further resource growth in the area. And within the gold belt that we are operating, we have satellite deposit very close by our current operation. So during the exploration stage there, it will be quite interesting for us to be able to, for example, look at doing bulk sample or something like that and move to Nalunak and then further grow the resource potential within the area. So there's a lot to be said here in a very few words. Well, I'm trying to choose very few words, as you can hear, but, but there's a lot of activity and a lot of inflection points that we uh, have within the company to create a substantial amount of value we feel to our shareholders. Well, we look forward to hearing about more of that, uh, those inflection points. In the meantime, Elder Olofsson, CEO at Amarok, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.